before this video gets underway, I'm going to apologize because we had some audio issues again. Somehow, it just keeps happening to me. I don't know why I can't seem to get it consistent, but uh, the mic quality is going to be a little bit weird because settings got messed up there, and the in-game audio is almost inaudible because it was somehow only recording at about 10% of its normal volume, so my apologies. We're going to go music over the entire video, including the gameplay. Um, uh, but at least it's a good game. How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week five, and we finally are up to our final road game of this opening road trip of the season. Five in a row, uh, against a one and two Georgia Tech this time out as the number five team in the country. They are a very similar overall. It seems like their overall rating and their offensive rating will be the same as ours, but we have an edge in the defensive category. Uh, our defense looks really, really stellar right now. Offense is scoring a ton of points per game. Uh, and somehow, even on the turnover differential so far this season, looking good. We are favored to win. Georgia Tech has played three games. They have lost to a ranked 21 Old Miss, who's now 3-1. and one. Uh, They beat Wake Forest, a 2-1 and one opponent. So that's a pretty solid. I mean, their schedule is nothing to sneeze at right now. That is impressive because uh, their last loss, it is against Middle Tennessee State, but uh, they're 3-0. and oh, So it was a close one in their two losses and a close one in their win. If we can win this, I hope it's not a close one. I'm looking for a blowout. Uh, maybe they're looking past us towards this Clemson game, but uh, very good news for the ACC to have two top five teams at the moment and speaking of that let's take a look at this stuff championship contender still just an a somehow i think we're one slot away from the a plus which would give us that uh bonus point advantage with the recruits and the conference prestige is only a b plus so we've been jumped by the pac 12 uh big 10 and sec are in a league of their own at the moment but we need to continue to win and we need the ranked teams in our conference to continue to win to get this one up um where does that leave us we don't have a lot of points that we can give out so far this week uh where are we sitting with the top guys on our board we know that this is going to be difficult at the moment but we're now in the lead with will dixon we're still in the lead with chris douglas mike fontaine uh, is new to the board, and we are looking okay with the 80 overall running back. That's pretty solid. Spencer Stanley, again, still just fighting to hold on against Georgia. We're actually getting more bonus points than them now. Uh, I don't know what changed for them, or maybe something changed for us, but uh, great news. I think maybe we went from an A- minus to an A in our uh, championship contender. But that's fantastic as we might be able to start pulling this in. And okay, they have their visit set for week 13. So we actually have our visit that we can schedule with Spencer Stanley. We were waiting to see where they went with theirs. They go week 13. We don't have a, a home game later than that. Um, but I think that we're going to send them to Duke because we go after LSU. So we get a couple of extra bonus points there. So we just need to get the Duke game to have a little bit more to get the complimentary visit bonuses. So we'll start to stack that up. And right off the bat, there's some. And with Jeremy Harrison, the wide receiver, we can send him to the Duke game as well. Look at that. 600 points for us compared to Alabama's 200. Or I guess it's now 300 because we've pushed them to the three spot. But good news all around for us there. Nick Pittman. What are we looking at with the guard in the lead? Jeremy Callahan in the lead. Jeremy Harrison starting maybe to make a jump for the lead. I think Alabama might be able to run away with this one. It'll be tough. He's already 74% locked as well. Uh, looking okay with Josh Bryant. Just trying to get in front of Ohio State. Antoine Pope. Like all around, our recruiting for these top players is looking really, really good. Uh, we need Ian Bain to commit so we can give his points elsewhere, but with our remaining points, we have nine guys that aren't scouted, and we're not down very far. I went a little bit low lock cheese on these guys to try to find some, some people to add on to the board, so let's go ahead and see. Is Mike Fontaine going to be worth keeping around? Um, 80 overall, goes down to a 78. Not the fastest, but 77 strength, 76 break tackle, good stiff arm, good trucking. I like it. I like having a nice strong back, so that'll be potentially Mike's role. How about Elvis Payne? The linebacker goes up to a 78, 98 acceleration for him. It's pretty quick off the line. 
with Michael Davis. We go up to a 77 and let's go with... I don't know if I want to look at Billy. Let's look at the defensive tackle in Ryan Hall. 71 overall before scouting, and he's a gem. Hits the 78 mark, gives us a little bit of extra XP. Again, I wish that his acceleration was a little bit better, but as a D tackle, it's not as important as, say, as he, if he was a defensive end. But uh, just a lot of good-looking players for us. And again, we don't have a whole lot to do with our recruiting right now just because we don't have the, uh, the points to put into people, but we'll start to get stuff, people committed maybe in the lead with uh, a couple of those really big guys now. So starting to look good. Ian Bain, I expect him to commit within the next two weeks. We're the only team with a visit. It's coming pretty soon in the season. 78% locked. I think I actually could probably take points out of him, but it's, I don't know, 3,000. Um, I said that I was going to keep points into people until they committed but I'm going to take Ian Bain's points away. Uh, we're up 3,078% locked. Uh, I just want to get a couple of guys. Let's see, do the scouting for the rest of the people on our board. Make sure that they belong here, which so far they do. Okay, Billy Waite is a gem, so it doesn't matter who I scouted there. I was going to find a gem, Billy Waite. 92 speed, 89 acceleration, not bad. 92 carrying is great for a wide receiver. 81 route running is pretty solid. Spec catch is great. Looks like a pretty solid player. How about George Morales? He's a 67. I'm going to keep him on the board just because we're not very far behind. And Joel Jones. He was a 64. He goes up to a 66. Same situation. We're not very far behind, so we'll just continue to look at him. How about our no scholarship crew? Let's give scholarships now to the guys that we're in the lead with. And then maybe some guys who are pretty close. But that way we can use our points this week and then we'll have them next week. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll be able to decide what to do with them in the future. And this will give a few guys an extra 50 points. So, uh, interesting on the scouting front. Let's hope that it goes well here and we can get a good class. A look here at our top 25 can see, uh, Texas, Penn State, Clemson, Florida, and then us all rounding out the top five. Clemson plays Notre Dame here. I'm going to say, oh, I don't know. I don't want Notre Dame to do well because I don't want to play them in the conference championship. But if they win this game, it makes our win over them look even better. But if Clemson loses, it hurts our conference prestige. So I have no idea. But a big matchup there between number three and number 11. We have Alabama and Ole Miss playing. That's 15 versus 21. Other than that, no ranked versus ranked games. Uh, again, having to look for some chaos as we're starting to get... Kind of into the middle of the season. Uh, potential chance that we see Oregon State level up, which, by the way, uh, I don't know when this is going to be uploaded, but likely it'll be uploaded on Saturday, the 24th of April, which means that today, the first uh, update for the Pac-12 in the revamped mod, version 11 is going to come out, which will include, like, Oregon, I think Oregon State, like, Arizona State or something, maybe Washington State. Uh, we're going to go over that and we're going to take a look at all of those guys because uh, the, the uniforms, especially with Oregon, are going to be pretty awesome. Quick reminder, Marquise Jackson and Radon Randell are both in the top three for the Heisman watch. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of Radon throwing to Marquise, I think, in this game as much as we can do. But enough of a delay. Let's get into this one. Georgia Tech, yeah, they are a 93 overall with a 97 defense, but only a 90 offense. Uh, I say only, although this is going to be very difficult. All whites for the fifth game in a row. We'll see if they will fail us at all this season. Georgia Tech has, I think, some very cool uh, uniforms with the update. But I think we're just going to go. Let's see. Do we go alternate three? Yeah, we're going to go alt three. But I like that white helmet. What, is, uh, what does this look like? Yeah, we're going to go with that. White helmet, navy jersey, gold pants. We'll see if we can beat the yellow jackets. Offensively, definitely a top... Uh, well, a top half team for Georgia Tech. They aren't the best that we've ever seen, but they're not bad either. Um, two losses, but they were close. Defensively, not good at all. If we struggle to score on these guys, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Best players, a 95, a 94, and a 93 as they go wide receiver, quarterback, wide receiver. So we'll have to make sure that the defensive backs are up to the challenge today to guard those two guys as they do have an outside linebacker with a torn hamstring. No injuries for us. Right on Randell got knocked out of last game, but it was only for that game. So uh, nothing for us really to worry about. 
So we're here in Georgia at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Uh, trying to take on the Yellow Jackets. Tails never fails, and this time it actually doesn't. It's been pretty bad for us. I think we're now two and three. We're going to elect to kick this one off. And they have decided to get the wind at their back for the second and fourth quarters of this game, which is a pretty good decision by them, as we will just keep them to a touchback on the opening kickoff. I am not sure what to expect from these guys, but wouldn't be surprised if they pass two wide receivers, but they go on the ground and John Muhammad uh, doesn't get it. Did we try to recruit John Muhammad? Was that somebody else? I know we had looked at somebody with the last name. Second and nine. Will they go to the air? No, it's an option out towards the edge. Quarterback breaks the first tackle and then goes inside, does a little shimmy, finds three yards, but we have them in the third down. Georgia Tech is in the hurry up to start this game. Pressure trying to get to the quarterback, and, well, they found the running back for the catch, but he's out of bounds, they say. Fourth and six. They're going to take a look at this, but even if this is a completed uh, catch, it still will be fourth down. It'll just be fourth and one, and maybe they could go for it, and I don't know. I could see them saying that he was out of bounds. I could also see them reversing this. And they do indeed reverse it. So fourth and two, they get four yards uh, extra because the refs fixed their mistake. However, it is still the punt formation here for Georgia Tech. So Marquise Jackson, number one on the Heisman watch list right now in the season, back to return a punt. And this one is returnable. If we can get the blocking, you never know. He's an absolute monster. Good chase down from number 27. Georgia Tech uh, just allowing a minimal gain there as the offense will come out. And let's keep looking for Jackson. Our running game has been pretty suspiciously bad so far this season. So like every other game, we're going to do what we can to try to get it going early as uh, I made a mistake. I wanted to. I completely forgot this. I wanted to put uh, Braden Bennett as the starter. So into the depth chart, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it just feels like Brayden's been a lot better than CJ. He's been though, CJ's a 99 overall. So we're going to let Brayden get the chance at being our number one for this game. And we'll see how he performs. And okay. Should have kept it towards the edge. Had a lot more space out there, but still picking up positive yards. And I'm going to try to open these guys up by running it on this third down. This is four down territory for us. The counter, not enough. Braden can't quite get there. The block from the wide receiver isn't enough, and it's fourth and one. So we're going to come out here in the I form. Uh, 46 yard line, fullback dive to JJ Barr. He's got just barely enough. Oh, wow. That was closer than I expected it to be, but the drive will stay alive here for us. The offense hasn't been the best this season on their opening drive. Um, but we're still alive right now. We'll look to the air. Safety's pulling back, which should mean Braden Bennett is wide open. He is. The back juke, not quite enough for him to uh, make everybody miss, but still got the first down. Going with the run up the middle on this first down. Mm, Bennett kind of shedded the first tackle, but still only two yards. So we're just not quite there yet, it seems like. We'll step back to pass on this one. The pressure is coming outside the pocket. It was really late finding right on our uh, Marquise Jackson there, but we find Logan Malden instead, enough to get the first down. Play felt broken to me. Definitely very happy to have gotten the completion. Throwing on the run with Radon can get a little bit scary sometimes. As again, running out towards the edge. We just aren't holding our blocks long enough for gaps to form. So they shut really quickly on the door and CJ gets a yard. What if we go to the air again? Safety coming up outside the pocket. Marquise is open. He's got the catch and he's got the first down inside the 15. That was a little bit scary of a throw. That man underneath, if he made the right play, could have potentially picked it off. But Radon does a good job getting it far enough out. And it opens us up to be able to keep running the ball. Every time we have a successful pass, I'm going to follow it up. Probably with a run as Radon made a man miss and then <laughs> took a shot from this safety. Not a huge hit, but a hit nonetheless. Still got five yards, though. I would really love to be able to just run this one in. Braden Bennett is in at the running back spot. The blocking there enough, and Braden just bowling his way forward gets us the first and goal. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that to go for seven at all. 
And from the inch line, typically we'd go fullback die, but we're going to try to reward Braden for that run with the first and goal fullback, or running back dive, I should say, up the middle, completely untouched. And we are first to strike in this matchup. Uh, okay, 7 nothing. It was a long 12 play drive, three and a half minutes burned off the clock. It's uh, over half of the first quarter as the defense coming back out, trying to get another three and out. Uh, see what we can do. We're going to open up this drive with our first blitz of the game. It looks like it's going to be an option out towards the edge and we hit the quarterback for a loss of three. Sims maybe had the pitch. I don't know if it would have given them f more or fewer yards because we probably had the running back covered. But now we have this offense on the back foot, second and long. Kind of expecting a run, and yeah, they will hand it off, and the blocking was fantastic. He's falling over, guys, and he got 15 yards. That's not what I like to see. First down again. Uh, you know, for having a really good wide receiver core, they have not used them very much. As, okay, quarterback scrambles. We only give up three yards on the play. Really tempted to bring the safety blitz on this one, but I don't think I will just yet. Instead, we'll expect the run towards the edge, and Kale Mackey with the big hit drops Muhammad for a loss of two, and it's third and long. Expect to see an out route or a corner route here go for the first down. There's the out route, and it is to the running back. No, it's to Steven Muhammad. Okay, so they did pick up. That's a guy that we had recruited. He's now playing for Georgia Tech, and he's having a big play as... Oh, that is potentially momentum killing for the Yellow Jackets. A little false start will back them up on first down. And just every time they make those mistakes, it forces them out of the hurry up, which allows us the opportunity to... Oh my gosh. Uh, the opportunity to sub, and they go for the option again and lose two more yards to so second and 17 this time. Seems like the Yellow Jackets are content with that being the final play of the first quarter. So clock will reach zero and we will have the opportunity uh, to really take control of this game. If we can just get the stop on defense up 7-0 as we head into the second quarter. If I ran as many of these speed options and whatnot as they are, we would definitely fumble the ball a couple times. But maybe they're a little bit more uh, versed in running those plays successfully. They try to go up the middle and they only get two. And it'll be us going into the cover three to try to defend this third and long. Just giving up the easy short throw because it's not going to hurt us. It's still fourth down. His quarterback might be a perfect three of three through the air, but his team has no points. And you better believe that uh, I'm not going to return this one. <laughs> Close to it being a really, really good punt. Almost the coffin corner there from Cruz, but instead it's a touchback for our offense. And depending on what they show, I might be sending Marquise deep. No. If they press up on him, it's game over. They're refusing to do that so far. We're going to be patient. This is a terrible throw. This is a terrible throw. It's going to be picked off, isn't it? Yep. I don't know what I'm doing. I knew it was bad. I still threw it anyways. Oh, wow. Well. I have no excuses for that. Other than just I got greedy. I saw the guy who I want to win the Heisman kind of open, but not really way out of Radon's reach. So I have to call on the defense here. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I knew that was a bad play from the moments I even thought about, you know, throwing that ball. But then I still threw the ball anyways. I got no excuses. None. They're going to try to run this one. A little bit of a draw. Running back breaks the tackle. And again, just stumbles his way forward and gets another first down for Georgia Tech. This could be a really big momentum changing situation in this game as we're going to bring the big blitz and force the quarterback to throw it away. He felt the pressure, got rid of it, and now we can make some subs. For me, it's just all about making sure that we are keeping, uh, you know, high stamina players out on the field. Phillips can't get the tackle. Sandcastle can't do it. Man, we eventually do it. Avery Boyd really not wanting to go down on that play. He's got his team, the third and five, as we will try to get this play set up. And there's the out route. Too slow to find it. I, I knew it was going there. I just couldn't get there in time. So they get another first down. Yeah, I'm definitely expecting this to be a run. Probably another option. Probably out towards the edge. No, they will step back to pass. Plenty of time. They go over the middle. And there's a big hit. But every boy holding on uh, once again. 
So what can we do to stop him again? Back to pass. And it's another corner out just wide open. Oh, our zone's not working and neither is our man defense. So we're just going to have to get lucky is what it feels like. First down for Georgia Tech as they step back to pass and find Stephen Muhammad over the middle. Five yards. Oh, this is just too much right now. Can't get the stop as we'll hope for the best. And this one's going to be a run. And we've got guys there. But again, he's just stumbling forward. We make the initial contact, but can't just pull him down. So we had a chance to go up 14. I made an incredibly stupid decision and threw a pick. And now it's a tie ball game. No one to blame but myself. So we just have to hope for the best. Offense. Needing to do something. This is a terrible idea, but I am bringing this out of the end zone. It would be a 109-yard kick return. Or we can start inside our own 15. Oh, uh, shoot myself in the foot here. Probably shouldn't go straight to the pass, but that's what I want to do. And... Malcolm Williams! The safety just missed him, and he's gone! He might be caught up to... No, he's... Oh, wow! 87 yards to the house! A little burst of speed is what it looked like there at the end as the defense was closing in and we've gotten our lead back. The safety just kind of missed him. Terrible angle that he took and then he got picked up on the block and Malcolm was never, ever going to be touched on that play. The worst part about all of this is that our defense has to come right back out onto the field. I don't like that one bit. They're good special teams play. Mm, man, we're having a hard time tackling these guys right now. I want to force a fumble. Who knows if it's going to actually be possible, but that's what I want. They bring the tight end in motion. And not going to be an option like I thought it could potentially be. Quarterback. Wow, good scramble. Couldn't get there in time, and he gets eight yards. We'll see what we can do on this second and two. Is Oh, I got burned. Uh, I like accidentally hit left trigger and he went into a weird little motion and then just got ran away from. I'm not going to lie. It gets really annoying having to play against these hurry up teams. Like we get it. You don't have to do it every single play. Stepping back to pass again. Quarterback scrambling. No fumbles. Trying to go for the strip there, but it doesn't work. We do get the sack. However, we're going to try a little bit of a 3-3-5 for a couple of plays here. See what that does for us is the quarterback. Oh, ho, ho, ho. they thought Durham was getting the strip for sure. But he wraps up the QB and drops him for a loss. And once again, it's a third and long for us to try to defend. These plays have been mediocre so far. But we'll hope for the best. Third and 16, they do step back to pass. No screen or anything. It's a man wide open. How do we have that many guys dropped back in coverage? And they still have somebody wide open. Oh, out routes are killer for us. Less than two minutes in the half at this point. Uh, if they score, they better give us enough time to do the same. Hoping, hoping that the defense can figure something out as they go to another out route and he's wide open. This could be an interesting decision. We're going to try the corner blitz. See if we can't manage to get the stop that way. So they do step back to pass and hey, look at that corner out. Wide open. If Leon gets burned by him again, I'm, uh, I don't know. I might have to cut him from the program. Sidney McRae says no to the option. Thankfully, we're shutting that down. But our ability to stop the pass leaves so much to be desired. Second and 14. This one's going to be a run up the middle. And we do get the stop there. So the clock is moving third and 14. I'm going to save the timeout, though. Can we get the stop here? Third and 14, hoping for the best. They step back to pass. Quarterback maybe has a man. Will Phillips get burned? Fourth and one on taking the timeout. They're going to get a field goal, but we'll have plenty of time to score ourselves. Just a real shame that we couldn't quite uh, get there in time as they do get the kick up and through the uprights. We maintain the lead, but with a minute and 19 left in the half. Two timeouts. I think we could do this. Let's see. Is it a returnable kick? I don't think so, because they have the wind at their back. No, it is very returnable. Marquise, he hasn't gotten good blocking for three games or so in a row. Two games, at least, because last game we couldn't do anything. This game, special teams has been next to worthless. A little bit frustrating. Uh, Kind of wanted to come out and throw the four verts. I'm not so sure that's a great idea now, so... We'll drop back, looking for something, and that should be an easy throw to Malcolm Williams, who gets it 
holds on through that little shove out of bounds and stops the clock for us. Again, we'll drop back to pass on this one. Tyson Mobley. Oh my gosh, look at how much space he had. Oh, he was coming back a little bit further than Radon threw it. So while he was wide open, the pass wasn't there. Second and 10 now. Throw another curl. There's Marquise. Thankfully, we match up with him. Get the reception. Only his second of the game. And we'll take a bit of a risk here before potentially taking the timeout. A minute left. We're going with the triple option. Radon gets the pitch out. There's some blocking for L Malden and Logan. Got positive yards, but not enough. Just a little bit too slow for him to be running that. Still trying to avoid taking the timeouts. Stepping back to throw. Nobody's open. Radon, don't fumble the ball. Thank goodness he did it, but now we have to take the timeout. Third and inches. Definitely did not feel comfortable trying to force a throw there while he's on the run. And look at this. They are really pressed up. They are really pressed up, but our boy Marquise Jackson not in the game on this play, so it's going to have to be somebody else burning their man. No deep safety there. It is why Bradshaw has it, and Chad gets us inside the 10, getting the stiff arm cheese, and he's down to like the one or the two yard line. Another big pass play for us. We'll try to come out here in the hurry up, get set as soon as possible, and we're going to go with a read option, right on, plenty of space. Just, yeah, cut it back inside. Late hit on our quarterback but he's got the touchdown i'm sure he'll be fine and we increase our lead before the half here uh, this is all added on top of the fact that we get the ball to start the third quarter so just in a good spot for us to potentially put this one away early in the second half maybe just be able to bring in the second team offense at some point that would be nice only problem with that is that second team offense doesn't help the first teamers the the heisman hopefuls uh pad their stats so maybe we won't do that a little bit of pressure coming to the quarterback and manny stokes well slows him down maybe he made him go the wrong direction too much and they only got four yards somehow out of the play and georgia tech not gonna run another one two timeouts left still and down 11 points but they say okay let's go to the locker room let's figure something out uh we've got them where we want them uh, the only reason they have a touchdown is my mistakes. So I'm feeling confident. And it's just a matter of time until we figure some stuff out here and really get rolling. I think that we're going to slaughter these guys in the second half. Try to open this, up this first drive with a big one. And hey, while we're here, if you like the video, please hit like. Uh, it helps us to get the video seen by more people, which is always great. And I appreciate uh, all the support that you guys have shown for these videos. Marquise. Can we get a good return? It's been a long time. It is a returnable kick. Please give me some blocking, maybe towards the edge. That'll do. Marquise, a lot of space getting chased down. Whoa. 88 just turned on the Jets, but there's a penalty. So this one is coming way back. Special teams just does not have it at the moment. We're starting at our own 12. This is kind of brutal. All right, we'll try to run it. Fake sweep. Give it to Brayden Bennett. And no, nothing doing. Our blocking just is not good enough. Can't hold long enough to, to get to the gap. And Brayden Bennett, a little bit shaken up on the play, which will bring in CJ Beasley for this play action. They're bringing pressure. I just got to get rid of it. Logan Malden, no way he came down with that. He's not even that fast, but holding on through the contact gives us the first down. And uh, Radon's throwing at an 80% rate today. One incompletion, one interception, and some room to scramble and get the first down with his legs. I think we had guys open, but again, sometimes there's no need to throw if we don't have to. Hoping that Braden isn't injured? No, he's back in. So just a, a little stinger or something on the, the previous running attempt from him as he takes this one for a solid five yards up the middle. We're going to give him the ball one more time on this one. And there's just not many blockers with the spin move. What the heck was that? Somehow just found him in a gap. He worked his way through and got us the first down. And we might be giving the ball to him again on this read option. Right on. Oh, just barely outruns the uh, linebacker there. They're able to slide down after a pickup of eight. We'll pass it on this second down. Go to the check down. Just give it to Chad Bradshaw. Take our six yards. Take our first down. Aside from the interception, this has been a pretty solid game from the offense. Especially, this is a pretty high 93 overall uh, Georgia Tech's team. So, uh, it's not like we're playing a, a bad opponent in this one. Can't get 
cocky just quite yet, though. We are still in a bit of a battle. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. I tried to throw the ball, and it was going to be an interception. Instead, scrambling, throwing it across our body, just taking the incompletion. Hopefully, Radon didn't take too big of a hit there, because I think he did get hit throwing. Uh, again, I just, I, I'm so worried about throwing picks sometimes that I'm missing some open stuff as I can't get the throw off looking for the check down. I hit the button too late and it's a sack fourth and 18. I'm going to have to take the field goal here. Well, I screwed up and accidentally called the play. So we're going to try to draw them offside, I guess. Fourth and 18 likely to become a fourth and 23 for us if our offensive line will jump. This is the most disciplined they've ever been. So I guess we're going to have to take... A delay a game. Oh my gosh, they literally will not jump. We almost got one of them. Wow. That's crazy. I've never seen an offensive line not false start with that many fake snaps. Now we can take the field goal. And the game just really doesn't want me to kick it. Not even suggesting that we do it. It's a 49-yarder with the wind at our back. And Frederick should have more than enough. Oh no, he docked it. Oh, th five yards closer without the delay of game we get it penn state losing to illinois that is so painful well gotta give credit where it's due georgia tech's defense held us there forced us to try the field goal and then we failed at it so they get an opportunity to make this a one score game now as the quarterback scrambling around the pocket stumbles forward still falls down so we get the credit for the sack and they do lose three yards Sydney McRae doing a weird little flip just happened to trip the man up. So we are benefiting from it. They're going with the screen. Oh, no. Broken tackles. And I accidentally hit the hit stick with Manny Stokes. So this could be a touchdown. Jenkins does pull him down. The freshman potentially saving a touchdown. My user is really costing us a lot so far in this game. They're going to snap it. Can we get there to stop the run? We can. A big hit at the line of scrimmage. Thankfully slows him down. See what we can do on this one. Again, stepping back to pass. Quarterback has to throw it away. Oh, I thought he was about to get sacked, but he's able to get rid of it. And bring up the third down. Let's see what can we do here. Third and 10, expecting the pass. They go to the air and they go over the middle. Aaron Jenkins can't get there in time. So Avery Boyd once again cooks us for 13. I don't want to count the number of uh, receptions he has on this one. Is They had us out of position on that uh, hurry up, but Antonio McBride gets in there and gets the tackle for loss. What can we do to stop this? Second and 13, man comes in motion. We haven't seen the option in a little bit. As they're oddly burning clock, this will be a run with nowhere to go. Durham Finch gets him. And this is where we have screwed this up every drive recently. Trying to stop stuff going over the middle. We do get the hold on fourth down or on third to bring up the fourth down. And this looks like uh, our missed field goal will turn into a potential made field goal for them. So a bit of a shame as the kick is easily through the uprights. And it's in just an eight point game with 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Definitely anything is possible at this point in the game. We could still blow them out. They could still blow us out, though, however. So the offense needs to get it done here. Trying to avoid turnovers or penalties. And we were close to really sending Marquis deep on that a little bit. A couple of steps to the right. He could have been gone. And I think it's in our best interest just to get to that fourth quarter with the lead. So we're going to take some time. Or maybe not Brayden Bennett breaking the tackle. Oh, if he doesn't have to break that tackle and he keeps his momentum he could have been gone but a great pickup out towards the edge for the running back and we will come out here on this first down from about midfield to make this our final play of the quarter over the middle quick throw to JJ Bar. oh my gosh the fullback held on to that through a massive hit thank goodness we got a first down so a first and 10 in georgia tech territory to go into the fourth quarter with the eight point lead a touchdown here might be enough for us to hold on and get this fifth win of the season but we just need to score i would take a field goal here if we had to we know that we need probably to be at about 41 yards for the length of the field goal now that the wind is coming at us i would maybe feel comfortable close to the 30 yard line kicking 
I hope we don't have to, though. Second and six. Pressure coming. Just getting the throw up. Brayden Bennett, he gets a block, so he's got a lot of space to run, and the running back gets the first and goal. Man, he almost didn't hit the ground. That was kind of a, a situation where he was close to being able to stand up and take that to the house. Radon now 11 of 14 through the air. I'm going to call a play that I don't think is going to work, but we're going to try it anyways. The toss to the strong side usually doesn't work in this game, but the blocking is beautiful, and CJ Beasley comes in the slower of the two running backs, and he's still able to get out to the edge and get into the end zone, so we will extend this lead, and we're just going to kick the extra point. No need to go for two or anything here. We're up 15 points now with 5 minutes and 17 seconds left in this game as King's going to bring this one out of the end zone on the return. Do, do a decent job. Just out past the 20. One thing a little bit disappointing for us is not creating a turnover so far in this game. Looks like it's going to be a run towards the edge and we were there with Don Riley to get the stop. How is this man still on his feet? Oh my gosh, Stephen Muhammad. I really wish we could have recruited him. Gets it done on that play. Just fighting and fighting. Bringing the safety blitz. Second and five. And we get in there to hit John Muhammad in the backfield. And man, he is holding on to that football through some big hits and staying on his feet. We did, however, manage to drop him for a loss of two on the play. So it's third and six. They step back to pass. And the quarterback has a man. But Don Riley gets the deflection. Can't get the interception, unfortunately. But it'll bring up the fourth and six. And they might have to go for this. But instead, it's the punt formation coming out. I guess maybe a little bit too risky for them. They're at their own 25-yard line. This one going to be very returnable for our boy Marquise. If I don't screw that up. Uh-oh. Just pick it up. Just pick it up. We can still manage something out of this. Marquise running backwards. Uh-oh. <laughs> I thought maybe he would have the speed to bring him all over to one side of the field and then run around him. But that was not the case. And then I started to panic. So we're starting at like the 10. That's fine. We've started to drive here already once in this game. We can do it twice. Brayden Bennett, nothing doing on first down. Oh man, I made that punt look really good for Georgia Tech. I just accidentally moved Marquise right before the ball got to him. So it bounced off his noggin, which is suboptimal. Right on keeping it for seven gets us a third and manageable here. And on top of everything else, it keeps the clock moving. Although this might not, as we'll look to throw on this down. And we should have Tyson Mobley. Good job holding on through the contact. Good play from the DB, but just couldn't jar the ball loose. So we get the first down with three minutes. We'll go ahead and try a counter. Continue to get some running in. Braden. Oh my gosh, she gets so close on a lot of spin moves. Still picks up seven yards as we get over 100 yards as a team on the day. We're going to go play action on second and three. Uh-oh. Throwing it away immediately. <laughs> that play was just weirder than I expected it to be. The blocking wasn't there, and we're lucky not to get sacked. So let's try to pick up this third and three. We got the last one. I'm going to be getting outside the pocket with Radon, and look at who's wide open. Logan Malden gets it, trying to keep him inbounds. We do. Um, One more first down might be enough. Definitely need to run the ball here. Get Georgia Tech to start taking their timeouts as we cut Braden back inside just to make sure we get positive yards. And Georgia Tech has taken their first time out of the game as we've got the second and eight. Braden staying in for now and again cutting it back inside and still just chugging the feet along as he gets six yards. Burned a lot of time on the play itself and forces Georgia Tech to take their second timeout. And we'll take a risk here potentially. Looking at the bubble screen, and Brayden does hold on to it. It's not enough for the first down. The block didn't hold long enough. They do have to take the timeout, and it's fourth and two. And we're going game ender here. A first down could be enough. Otherwise, they get decent field position. A was open. I did not mean to throw off the back foot. Tried to get set, just didn't do it. That is so disappointing. A terrible effort on fourth down, and Georgia Tech's not out of it yet. My user is the only reason that this is even close uh, of a game. Like, th we should be blowing them out. We get the sack on first down, which will be great because the clock will have to keep moving. But I certainly don't feel good about it as they spike the ball. Third and 17. A little bit interesting that they didn't go in the hurry up to uh, spike that ball. They just 
went into the huddle and then oh wait we need to we need to take a timeout the corner route burns us Kel Mackey can't stick with Billy Ward as he almost gets the first down it is fourth and two though and I'm gonna go super dangerous on this bring in a safety blitz the quarterback kept it what a terrible decision it's the turnover on downs and Georgia Tech just lost the game did not expect a QB blast the fans are booing the home team here at Bobby Dodd Stadium is Looks like Georgia Tech is going to take their third loss of the season. Another pretty close game. Braden Bennett just getting a couple more carries here to seal the deal. And because I'm a terrible person, I'm going to look to pass one for Marquise deep. I don't know. Probably a pick, but you never know. Oh, my gosh. He almost came down with that. <laughs> it stops the clock, but he's had a mediocre game. And if I'm being honest at this point, in my mind, the game is won and I need Marquise to continue to get yards for the Heisman race. So we're going to pass to him a couple times. 16 yard reception that time. And now I think that that will probably be enough. Take the knee, get our 10 XP, and then for the final play, we'll just uh, throw one up for him probably in the end zone. Bennett apparently in at quarterback again. I have no idea what's causing that, but second and 12, he does hand off to CJ Beasley. And that gets five yards. And we'll see. Will Marquise be able to find the end zone? I'm not so sure with the route that he's running, but we'll try it anyways for the final play of the game. Snap it probably at five seconds here just to make sure. And third and eight. Marquise forcing the throw. Can't come down with it. So well, one second left. We get to do it again on fourth down. It's certainly not a good look for us to be doing this, but... I'm going to keep doing it anyway. So, no, that's Mobley. I didn't even check to see who it was. Turn it over on downs, but it's the end of the game. Couldn't stat pad my way to a, a more impressive victory. But we get the win regardless. Starting the season 5-0. and uh, Jackson, yeah, not, just not a lot of yards today. Uh, but we get it done. Five games, five away games. We win them all. The all-white uniforms seeming to be a, a lucky charm on the road this season as we uh well we'll get the chance to finally have a home game next week which is pretty scary and we have to play an out of conference team in cincinnati so <laughs> just uh just a weird season and a weird schedule all around but we get it done we did lose the turnover battle but we won the day at the end of it so can't be too upset and hopefully some teams in front of us lost and we can move up from this number five ranking as far as we're concerned that was a pretty low scoring game 28 to 13 at the end of the day. Uh, we held them to 24 rushing yards, but still gave up 211 through the air. We outgained them in both facets, 122 on the ground and 3-2-1 through the air. Won the time of possession battle, but we did lose the turnover battle, which is disappointing. Back down to minus one on the season. Radon is our player of the game on the offense. Uh, two total touchdowns, did pretty good passing the ball. Had a couple of neat carries, but still threw an interception. And Sidney McRae, three tackles, all three for loss, and two sacks. Very, very impressive from him. So it's another W in the win column as we can just go ahead and advance the week. Week six, a ranked Cincinnati Bearcats team is coming to visit us for our first uh, time playing in Conway this season. Couple of recruits ready to visit as we get locked out by Justin Thomas. 70 overall middle linebacker. Not too worried about that. Cincinnati, 3-0, number 13. And we move up to number four in the country. They're only B-plus team, so we have the edge there. We are favored to win this. Who have they beat? Are they worthy of their ranking? Uh, that's our schedule. Let's see. They beat, oh yeah, that's right. They beat a number five Michigan, a current number five Michigan. Beat their FCS team and then beats uh, Miami of Ohio. So... Uh, the Michigan win, very impressive. They did slaughter Miami, but uh, giving up 19 points to an FCS team. A little bit interesting. We are the hardest game remaining on their schedule. If they can beat us, they could definitely win out, but uh, we certainly do not want to let them beat us. Curious why it was that we moved up. I'm assuming, yeah, Clemson lost to Notre Dame. So the Fighting Irish jump up to number seven as Clemson drops from three to ten. So our biggest win of the season is against a, a current top ten team, which is pretty impressive. Cal did lose to our now ranked USC, which is good news for us seeing another top ten team take a loss. Um, Alabama dropped out. Oregon State 
I don't know if they won their game because they somehow didn't get ranked, but just all in all, a pretty solid look for us. Notre Dame is third in the media poll? No, they're three and one. They have a loss to us. How could we not be ranked in front of them? That's a joke. Can't believe we just continue to get screwed over in weird spots like that. Heisman watch. Yeah, Marquise drops quite a bit down. Lackluster performance. Three catches for 44 yards. Couldn't get anything going on special teams, but Radon jumps up and takes his place uh, at the top of the list there. After a mediocre game, I mean, eight touchdowns to five interceptions and only 64% is really just not uh, not that great of a stat line, but he's getting enough yards, already 1,100 on the season. As a redshirt freshman, maybe they are just giving him the benefit of the doubt. Only 85 overall. I cannot wait to see what happens his senior season. That's going to have to do it for this episode, though. So again, thank you guys for watching appreciate it means the world to me um wow very very impressive that we've started this season like this we're definitely in a position where we could win every game maybe a little bit concerning that we have had some struggles in the running department but we just throw in some options here and there it seems to open things up a little bit more if you enjoyed this video please feel free to hit the like button uh, it really does help out a ton in getting the video seen by more people and the more people that see it the more people can go ahead and hit the subscribe button which is also very very helpful so uh, you know while you guys are down there doing that please feel free to head to the description where you can find links to my twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster as well as links to my twitter our community discord and the college football revamped mod as well they just released the version 11 of the mod which includes the start of the pack 12 which is fantastic very very excited for that but again thank you guys so much for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the teal boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later adios